Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Most people will go to the Wizarding World website and get sorted into their house and then that's it. But then what about those of us who feel dedicated and loyal, but then also resourceful and ambitious? I fall into that category and I'm sure there are plenty of people who feel like they might kind of belong to two houses. So in this video, we're gonna be making Hogwarts House Hybrid t-shirts. I am a Slitherpuff, so that Slytherin and Hufflepuff, I've been sorted into both houses. Every time I take the uh, take one, a quiz or something, it's one of those two. I've also got a bunch of other house hybrids that you can download to create this t-shirt. I spent way too many hours making these hybrid crests. I guess you could call this like a parody of the Hogwarts crests for the houses because it's kind of like a mashup. In the description box below, you're going to find download links to all the different house hybrid crests. These are not for any exchange of money. This is just a fun home project to do, and this is my fan art. There's also a list of supplies down there for everything you're gonna need to make this DIY. Let's get started. Find a shirt that is comfy and fits you. Um, dark or white will depend on what kind of transfer paper that you get. And then while you're wearing the shirt, you're gonna need a ruler, and then you just want to uh, measure how wide you want your crest to be. I've got them set at seven inches wide if you download the ones that I have and just print them as is. That's where we're at, seven inches wide. So as long as that fits on your shirt, you're good. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to scale the image down a little bit. You're also gonna need some transfer paper. I got this uh, fabric transfer paper. It's for dark fabric. So if you have a dark shirt, this is the one you want. Um, or if you have a white shirt or a lighter colored shirt, you're gonna wanna get one that's light fabric transfers. Um, this is for inkjet. They also have them for laser printers. Once it's printed to the page, you're going to want to cut it out. I'm going to use my Cricut for that, and I'm going to go into a little bit of a detailed tutorial right now to show you how I use my Cricut to line up things and, and do that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that, that's coming up next. If not, go ahead and skip forward to the next chapter. Once you've opened Cricut Design Space on your desktop, this is what it should look like. You should have a list of all your different projects that you've done here, if you've done any. These are all the ones I've done. So what I like to do uh, whenever I'm setting up a new one is I will actually open up one that I've done before and then click Customize. This is because I, I already have this set up so that it's going to cut in the right places. So if I select this, what I have here, and I can click over here where it says Detach, at the uh, bottom right. So now I have my template and then there's this tiny little square right here in the corner. And for me, this is set um, in, at this position. So here's the X position and the Y position. And that is in inches. And then the size is 0 0.083 inches. It's actually a very small square, but this is going to help the Cricut know where to start cutting on a page of paper. Um, there was a, quite a few steps and a lot of troubleshooting to get this right, and um, I don't really want to go into that. I can point to the video that I used to, to figure this out, um, so I'll just do that. Somebody already has a video out, and I'm linking that in the description box. Once you get that square in the right spot, then you can just reuse that over and over and over again. Don't move it. Leave it there, and it should cut almost exactly where you want it to cut, sometimes exactly where you want it to cut. Right over here, this is kind of like our layers here, if, if we're kind of talking about Photoshop, but they're just the different um, elements that we have here. So one of them is a square, and I've set it to pen. That way we don't, ac we don't have to like let our blade cut there. We just want to set it to pen, and then just don't put a pen in the machine, and it'll just pretend to draw a little square in the corner. And then we also have this one. I'm going to delete this for right now. We're just going to delete it. And then I'm going to upload something new. So I'm gonna click upload over here and I'm gonna click upload image. Now you can either drag and drop a file, which is what I'm gonna do, or you can click browse and pick one. So here's mine. I'm gonna click simple because it's just a black shape and continue. 
And then we'll have this. I just apply and continue. And then you can either choose a cut image or a print then cut image. And if you're doing it this way, you want it to be a cut image and then click upload. And now it is uploaded. Now we can select it and then over in the bottom right, it says add to canvas. We're gonna do that. And there it is. And as you can see, it's gigantic. This happens every time. And I think it's because I work in 300 DPI, uh, that's uh, dots per inch, inch or pixels per inch in Photoshop. I think, I don't know, maybe it's set to something lower in Cricut Design Space, so it makes it humongous. But at this point, we'll open it up in Photoshop right here. To get it the right size, I just do Control A, which is select all, or you can do edit select all, and then edit copy merged or Control Shift C. So that copies everything that we're, we're seeing right now. Um, the checkered part in the background, if you don't know, is transparent, so that's not gonna be selected. And then Control N or File New. And then we'll get this window and you want to do clipboard. And then over here, if you select clipboard, that's what you just copied, you'll have a width and a height and a resolution. This is the exact width and height of the shape. So I'm going to do, instead of pixels, inches. And now I know the width is 6.033 inches. <laughs> so I'm gonna copy that. I know that's a lot of steps, but it works. And then back in design space, make sure you have your shape selected. And then we're going to go to size and we're going to lock these so that the width and height maintain the aspect ratio. And then all I have to do is paste the width in there, 6.033, tab over, and then it becomes the correct size. Now to put it in the correct position, we'll go back to Photoshop. We can close this new document window. We don't need that right now. Control D to deselect everything, or you can select like your uh, marquee tool and just click somewhere and it'll deselect. And right now we're going to be adding guides. So we wanna make sure that view and snap is checked. And then if we drag a guide down from the rulers up there, you, it, you'll see it'll snap to the image when it gets close enough. We're gonna do that to the top and the left. And then our marquee tool, our rectangular marquee tool, we will click outside of the top left square corner somewhere and then start dragging in. And as you can see, the width and height are shown right there in inches. So if I let it snap, my selection snap to the guidelines I just created, now we know how far down and over the image is from the top left corner of the page. So it's 1.233 inches over and 2.36 inches down. So all we have to do is go into Cricut Design Space and put those numbers in. So we'll go over here and we'll put in for X position, 1.233. And then the second number was 2.360. So we'll go over here and we'll put 2.360. And then we'll tab and it goes to exactly where it needs to be on the page. And then we click and select our shape and the corner square. And then we select down here where it says attach right down here. So now that we've attached them, they are one thing. And now it w when we make it, it will cut in the right spot. So let's go ahead and click make it and see how it comes out. So make sure you don't want it mirrored or anything like that. We're gonna continue and it's connecting to my uh, Cricut Maker. So here's all of my favorited materials. You can click browse all materials and it will bring this up. You can search for materials, change the categories um, and yeah, or just scroll through and see what they have. I usually end up using cardstock for sticker paper and stuff like that because it cuts all the way through. You want to load the blade in. It's usually already loaded and ready to go. It says load a pen into clamp A. I'm not going to do that because I don't want it to actually draw anything. So I'm going to leave clamp A empty and then we're going to go ahead and cut this out. I've put my image down and stuck it to the adhesive cutting mat here. We want to put it so that the corners go underneath these little flaps here and here, 
so it, it kind of catches it there and push it all the way up until it touches these rubber parts. Then we push this button with the arrows, which will load it in. And then we push the C, the cricket icon here, and it'll start cutting. I was able to get it to cut out perfectly. So I saved that file and now I can print these out perfectly every time if I ever need to do it again. So we'll just peel this off of the adhesive cutting mat. I like to bend it a little bit to get it to flip off of it like this. There are a couple little holes to punch out right here and then there's one over here. And another thing I'm pretty excited about, I got myself a Cricut Easy Press 2. I'm excited to try this out. As you can see, it's still in the box. So this is the first time I've used it. I'm gonna go through it with you guys. So let's get this open and give it a try. To get the heat settings for this, you just go to your phone, go to cricut.com slash EP dash settings. And there's a bunch of different options to choose, but I just chose Everyday Iron On because it seemed like the most generic one. And then the shirt is 50% polyester, so I chose polyester as the fabric. So this is telling me that I need to set my press to 350 degrees for 30 seconds. So I'm going to press the temperature button, and we're going to set it to 315, which is what the app or website has told me. And then I'll push that again. Now it's starting to heat up. We need to get the placement just right on the shirt. So I'm gonna lay this out with the sleeves, I know where my arms are. And then our design, I just wanna make sure it's nice and centered. I don't want it to be off center. That looks pretty good to me. Whatever paper you get should also have instructions on it. You have to follow these instructions as well as this. We do have some provided tissue paper, which is gonna go over the top as we do the heat. I need to flip it over and peel off the backing and it's not sticky actually once this is peeled off it's just almost like a vinyl but it's not sticky at all i want to be safe and i'm just going to measure over from the sleeve that's about nine inches and then over from here hey that's perfect it was nine inches on both sides i can't believe that i got that just looking at it the wax paper goes on top next we will take the easy press and just put it on top of this and press the cricket button. And now it's counting down our time. Okay, so that got down to zero. It also said to flip it over and do 15 seconds on the other side. Hit the cricket button and I'm just gonna let it go 15 seconds this time. I didn't feel like changing the timer. There we go, 15 seconds. Now we just wanna make sure that the corners don't come up and it doesn't look like the corners are coming up. And I think it looks pretty good. Let's see how it fits. So there it is. Here is my homemade slither puff shirt, house hybrid shirt. You can download yours below. You can use whatever technique you want to get it on there. It's a heat transfer, so you can use an, uh, an iron or whatever you want. But I do suggest that Cricut Easy Press because it was an easy press, sorry. I am gonna host a little giveaway. I'm not gonna be giving away this t-shirt because it's a, I'm a Slither Puff. It would have to go to another Slither Puff, but I will be giving away a uh, heat transfer, fabric transfer print of whatever house hybrid crest you want. So if you want to win that and make your own shirt, go ahead and enter the giveaway. The link is in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.